As is the case with every new Samsung release, there are quite a few new features introduced in each new iteration. So uh, depending on who you are, you may or may not find these useful, but let's take a look at some of the ones found in the Samsung Galaxy S5. Hey, it's Josh Regar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is a feature-focused look at five new features found in the updated version of TouchWiz in the Samsung Galaxy S5. <laughs> All right, and here we are taking a look at some new features uh, in the software of the Samsung Galaxy S5 in this feature focus. However, before I get to the short list that I have of uh, the new software additions, I did want to show you some new enhancements to the overall experience that more or less may have been there before, but now have been given a bit of a different look or some different functionality. The first one is in the lock screen. Now this lock screen is already pretty nice uh, with all of the bright colors and whatnot and this camera button down here that you slide up in order to go straight to the camera but this widget up here is dynamic in that it will uh, show something different depending on what application is playing in the background um, and in this case i have the watch on or the smart remote app depending on what model you have uh, displaying some buttons that i can use to control my tv now from the lock screen it is really nice to be able to do this and in my case i have my tv already playing some jk news so you'll hear it in the background as i turn the volume up And from there, we'll move right along into the first item on my list of new software additions, the My Magazine. Now, you can see here in the video already that, well, I was a little bit disappointed with the My Magazine offering, primarily because even if it piggybacks off of Flipboard, it actually doesn't do so to the extent that I would like. You can see that it's a curated list of categories there, and primarily the subscriptions that you have in Flipboard already set up won't really filter through here as you have to pick from this particular list. Now, that's a bit of a bummer, but My Magazine does help you get your social media um, feeds to the My Magazine application itself. So it does allow you to sort of see a quick glance at what your friends are up to, if that's your thing. But when it comes to the news, uh, it might be a bit of a hodgepodge of different uh, uh, outlets and different sources that won't really allow you to delve into what you really want to see. That being said though, Flipboard is still a very powerful news aggregating application. Unfortunately, when it comes to the My Magazine, it uses Flipboard to sort of, to sort of show you a very particular list of things and ultimately when you click on an item you might be going into an area of flipboard that you pretty much don't really use anyway the next piece of software on our list is one that technically was there already but has been given new life primarily because of a new button layout in the past you had to hold the home button in order to get to the recent app screen but now we have a recent apps button as menu is not quite as needed especially in these new versions of android so if we hit the recent apps button we go straight to the recent app screen and we have a few options at our disposal not only do we have the list of applications that are right here that are shown in a pretty uh Samsung quintessential way, we also have a couple of options down here for clearing the entire list or going into a task manager, which is actually quite nice because it shows you how much memory is being used up at once. So if we head back to the recent app screen, it is uh, a nice way of getting between all of your applications nicely much more like a stock-like experience in which you just have that for multitasking. So if you're not a big multi-window user or even let's say a couple of other uh, multitasking abilities that are in touch with, and this is a little bit more your style because it's something that you're more used to, well, it's now available to you instead of having to wait for the recent app screen by holding down the home button. And this is definitely something that I enjoy doing because I'm used to this form of multitasking. Speaking of multitasking, there is one nice tool in the notification dropdown that you'll find called the Toolbox. Now, essentially, Toolbox is just a chat head, as you can see me dragging it around here, that gives you access to up to five applications that you can use for shortcuts in an easy way. That little chat head, as I keep calling it, the little toolbox, as it is called, will keep floating around no matter what application you're in, except for places like maybe games and the camera. Uh, but it is available for you to be able to jump between applications quite easily. It's almost like a somewhat different way of looking at your recent apps if you keep using the same five applications over and over again. And you can see here that in the settings, you are able to choose the five applications from the long list that might be installed in your phone. Now, here's one that I really enjoyed and it's called the Download Booster. It pretty much sets out to do what it says and that is make your downloads even faster for any files that are over 30 megabytes. In this case, I was doing 365 megabytes of a download of Plants vs. Zombies 2 and the Download Booster then uses Wi-Fi and your high-speed 
high-speed mobile data connection in tandem in order to download it as fast as possible. Let me tell you, it really works. This particular install uh, happened in just this record amount of time. You can see in the notification dropdown how fast you're going and which connection is providing that speed. And ultimately, it's a great way of just downloading large, large files from a number of different applications, including the Play Store, as you see here with this game. But also, one thing you have to remember is a fraction, maybe even half of this download was done using my mobile data. So I probably used up quite a bit of it. So don't get those overage charges. Just be careful when using the download booster. And in the final item on this list, we take a look at the ultra power saving mode. Now this is a really nice feature that allows you to stay connected even when you have a little battery life left. And by turning off the mobile data when the screen is off, by making everything monochrome, and also by turning off other features such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, the S5 software TouchWiz is trying to give you as much as you need uh, without really taking away all of your connectivity. And in this case, we're looking at the phone and messages and even the internet browser. Of of course, it'll be in black and white. Unfortunately, in the list of applications that you can use, it is a very limited list, but in a way it kind of makes sense because all of this is in the interest of saving as much battery as possible. But at the very least, you will still be able to uh, receive calls, you will be able to send messages using the messaging app, and you can actually do some web browsing if you really needed to. So it's just a mode that is available for those of you who really need to get the most out of your battery life. And so there you have it for this feature-focused look at some software additions put into the new version of TouchWiz in the Samsung Galaxy S5. Some of the enhancements that were put in, like for example, the new power widget with all the circles, and also all the circles that comprise the settings menu were already covered in the full review, so you can check it out on the full review. But in this feature focus, I wanted to give you a little bit more information on the five that I felt were most significant. And actually, outside of that list of five, there aren't too many other enhancements and additions, so you're pretty much looking at what is new in the software experience this time around. Stick around and drop us some likes on our videos because we love to see those thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And when you're done with all of that, head on over to androidauthority.com for more in-depth coverage because we are your source for all things Android.